Hello my soccer universe, Milano, city of Milan is back on the map of European football, which to me is rather exciting because I know that Madrid combined have more Champions League title than me, Milan, but the city of Milan, uh, but um, the city of Milan is the only city where there are two teams with a considerable chunk of Champions League titles and that those two are now matching it out for a spot in the final. It's actually pretty significant and yes, it's the luck of the draw. It is definitely the luck of the, of the draw, but it will be a spectacle. And uh, while overall, I have to say this quarterfinal was more or less a letdown. If it wasn't for Milan and Napoli, uh, who played out a rather intense tie, um, I think overall it was just a blah. I mean, uh, the return legs, Three out of four were already more or less decided and even though there were here and there smidgens of a chance you knew pretty much early on no miracle is gonna happen and yeah so it kind of petered out in that sense now what can I say about this Milan Derby coming up I actually let me put it first. I'm really, really happy that Milan is back in the uh, semi-final. However, the prospect of them playing a semi-final now against Inter, which is the best and worst opponent at the same time, and it's all about bragging rights, uh, kind of makes me shiver. It also makes me shiver because right between those two semi-finals, I think Milan have to play Lazio for another, um, you know, rather dodgy lineup and another chance to throw away the top four spot which is also true for Inter because those two teams are so in for the Champions League that I so much cannot see them winning uh, that it almost beggars belief in a sense. However, it also I think one important feature is that the league has been so much decided towards Napoli already that those two teams are actually can allow themselves to focus on the Champions League, which I think is really, really interesting to see, even though you wouldn't pick them as the favorites. On the other hand, so, you know, I said it's the best and the worst opponent. Milan may squander their top four chances because of that. On the other side, I think it will be a spectacle and I would expect that this semifinal will be I can very well imagine that this is the more entertaining semi-final of the two. Uh, Real Madrid will play Manchester City after both of them are cruising to the next round. Uh, it's a replay now with reverse signs because the first leg is at the Bernabeu. Unless something crazy happens and yes, Real Madrid can also focus exactly on the Champions League. And I think Angelotti is a great coach and Real Madrid is not uh, this chaos club at the moment as Bayern were, which Bayern was entirely self-made uh, in a way. Um, I just don't see Manchester City losing to Real Madrid. But I'm saying it right now. My dream final would be of course Real Madrid against AC Milan, although Milan will not play in white. However, I would like them to win in a red and black jerseys for once. However, if it's the other way around, and that's the way that the bookies are going right now, that is City against Inter, I am not sure if I'm gonna watch that. Uh, even worse, I probably might root for Inter in that one. And that is so not me, so uh, it's gonna be interesting, definitely. But let's briefly talk about but but against i mean three games i can tell you very shortly i mean chelsea there were some they created a few chances but i always had the feeling that real madrid are just in you know getting the result over the line and turn turn it on when when you need to there were a few chances if angolo kante uh converts would would, would be grave cucurea's a shot from close range is not saved by thibaut courtois although Honestly, I didn't find it such a great save. I mean, it was more great positioning play by Kuala Kuto, but I didn't find it uh, the, uh, the, 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 this great save because Kukure is just shoo shooting at him. But of course, the positioning is good. So if one of these go in, yeah, maybe it, it is game on. On the other side, the round already in the first, uh, ha first half a few chances. And then uh, Chelsea commit numbers forward. 
and in the end it is a really nice attack going over the right side and uh, past his left and right. I think uh, it was uh, Rodrigo, come come in, Benzema and Mimesis, goes to Vinny Vinny Jr, Rodrigo, empty net. 1-0 and that settled the game. Joao Felix, Charlem Sterling and uh, Mikano Mudrik will not do anything to change that. Even a Mason Mount that we haven't seen in a long while. No, it's more or less Valverde setting up another nice Rodrigo goal. 2-0 Real Madrid. No sweat. It literally, I felt no sweat. However, there was a lot of sweat and there was a lot of, uh, how do I say, heart palpitations from my part. Napoli, Milan, especially the first half, this was like a perfect Italian opera. Like you would, would imagine, a high drama. The game starts out with Napoli pressing Milan to the core. Uh, and I will get hopefully back la later. The stats of that game were just unbelievable in favor of Napoli, except for the final scoreline. For 20 minutes, Napoli pressed the life out of Milan. Milan could not get, get out. Whether this was not by design or it was Napoli's might, I I cannot really judge. Uh, what I can judge is that um, Napoli didn't get any shots on goal. They were shooting left, left and right, but it was all going uh, wide. I also thought that Calabria did an excellent job on Quaratskelia to keep him contained. And I really like Quaratskelia. I don't get it, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but you know, he's playing now against my team. And Calabria had him very much contained. Uh, taking balls off him, and I think him care, and I thought Kier and Tomori against Osimen might be a little bit of a mismatch because they, uh, especially Kier doesn't have the speed any, any, any anymore, but he did excellently. He, uh, I never felt that they broke his weight, and of course you have Magic Mike on the back. Now, um, it was well, it worked all gloriously for Napoli. Uh, I think the best two chances came from a uh, long range shots from Politano, which you know you could place a little bit better. However, then there's one counter attack where Mario Rui brings down Rafa Leao in the box, and it's a penalty for Milan. A uh, chance f to get the nerve settled uh, was not really meant to be because Olivier Giroud. Uh, I was like, I guess you wanted because Rafa had to go, uh, had had to go out, and, uh, and that was one. Who is gonna shoot now this pen penalty? Should be Thierry Hernandez. He has he has been good in penal penalties. Then Oli Giroud is uh, stepping up, and I'm thinking, yeah, I think I can see it. Yeah, I probably should have been Thierry Hernandez. It should have been Thierry to take that uh, one. In any case, uh, Meret saves a rather poor attempt. And you could see that Giroud was a little bit shocked uh, at his miss. And then on top of it, he had a pretty clear-cut chance just a few mini minutes later that also Meret saved uh, rather well with uh, his leg out. They could have made it 1-0 for Milan, where he could have redeemed him almost immediately. Then, so... We had this huge attacking wave of Napoli that did in a way continue, but we also had that Milan could launch the counter and it was all about Leao darting forward. I found it interesting that Teo this was this time not uh, madly going forward, but more or less a little bit self-contained um, and uh, bound with uh, defensive work. Which is not so t because you, you usually Teo Nandes and Rafa Leao all over the place, well, but Rafa Leao, uh, this one. Um, then the game kind of settled after two after Politano run where also um, uh, Theo Nandes takes the ball off him and he is injured and uh, Mario Rui is also injured both have to come on in the 34th minute of uh, because of in injuries and Lozano and Oliveira come on uh, both with kind of unlucky um, roles to play a few minutes later after Lozano is on Rafa Leao did he boo he Clears the ball of him in, in the box, but he also gets a lot off the foot. If that would have been a penalty, honestly, I would not have complained. I was, even when I saw the replay, I thought, yeah, great tackle by Leao. And then I saw the replay and even the comment, oh, this is a penalty. And I said, yeah, okay, fair. You know what? Uh, not that I was so super concerned because I know that my mag magic mic is pretty good at penalties. So uh, let's not forget about that. However... It's not given, and I think Napoli fans can be rightly aggrieved for that. However, with what followed, I'm not sure if it would have helped. Um, Napoli were really working their ass off as well. I mean, it was high drama, and you know, the whole thing settled a little bit. And I think this high intensity got a little bit on Dombele, 
who loses the ball and then Rafa Leao goes on a 70 meter run past I think three Napoli defenders goes around and then he, after his own ad, 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 admission he's past the last defender he thinks it's not the right place to shoot and score although he can very well do that but he saw that Giroud has an open net in front of him passes over it's 1-0 Milan yeah at that point it goes into halftime at that point Milan have played five halves against Napoli a free scoring Napoli a team and have he not conceded a goal that actually tells a big story and I don't see Milan as a defensive team but they worked the defense this time as they did the Spurs very routinely might I add and having the danger of going forward with a fit Rafa Leao and having this pinpoint I mean uh, Giroud is also an excellent worker and I have to say it, the central midfield with Benazer, Krunic working their ass off even Tonali although I didn't find him as great uh, were really performing very 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 well second half uh, was kind of the more of the same but with a little bit of letdown for offer there were so many things ha happening for the second half it was more about um, you know, they were again, it was the same structure, but it was for me the more about Milan just trying to get over this and routinely defending things, things way, but getting a little bit more tired in the process too. Uh, I knew that as soon as Brian Diaz, who didn't have a big impact uh, there uh, from, from Messias, okay, I said, yeah, but especially when Origi came on for Giroud, okay, it's gonna be a tough one uh, to see that we're not gonna score. Any, 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 any more it's now just to frustrate now Napoli and especially Oliveira had two great chances after cor cor corner kicks I think the corner count was something like 22 to 1 for Napoli which tells in many ways the story of the game however the two teams produced as many shots on goals as each other it's just Milan took a lot less which shows the efficiency that they played with uh, it could have turned to the 82nd when uh, a foul was given in the box and Quaratskelia has a penalty and Magic Mike saves it. He already, he gives so much calm to this defense. But in addition, you know that he's an expert in penalties and I'm saying it here what I've said a long time. If Mike Magnon is in the goal for France, Messi will not lift the trophy. We will be talking about um, a double championship for, for us. That is the difference. Mike Mignon makes a difference. I'm not going out there and say he's the best goalkeeper in the world yet, but he's top five. And the I still cannot believe you thought that Milan, you had with Don Donnarumma, the goalkeeper for your future. A great talent, uh, a boyhood fan, blah, 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 everything. Uh, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Yes, Don Donnarumma, I, I would also say, maybe top five. All this drama around him, getting there, and then you just say on the last day of the season, you just had to qualify for the Champions League, you ask him, do you want to know? I will on, on, on do what the uh, A agent does me. They say, okay, forget about it, we get Mike Mignon, and you upgraded that position. You upgraded that position. That is something that does not happen. That really does not happen. And you got him for a steal. So I cannot believe and, and he will he he will get paid. I'm absolutely sure. He's an he is a cornerstone of this Milan defense. With the penalty miss, you could actually really see that uh, the heads of Napoli were sinking. And you could see the Quadratskele who got emotionally very invested and probably he should not have taken the penalty either. Uh, with already his miss in Frankfurt. I honestly think someone else should, should have taken that penalty for Nap Napoli. And I thought Milan will see, see this out. Nap Napoli can play for another game and will not, not score. That nah, was not to be. Uh, yes, Raspatori came, 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 came on and, and so on. With more or less the last kick of the game, almost the last last game, Victor Rosimen gets his goal, kind of disproving that the theory that, you know, uh, with him in the lineup. Uh, it would have been a different story if he would have played in the 4-0 defeat. I don't think it would have been a different story there. Might have been a different story at San Siro, though. Uh, so, yeah, Napoli in that sense were unlucky. I also think, and I have to be fair, I think Milan, uh, with the performance they put in, probably overall deserved to win over Napoli. And Milan do seem to have Nap Napoli's number overall. And I think there might be a great rivalry brewing again. 
However, uh, uh, the refereeing was not in favor of Na Napoli. Uh, the um, uh, sending of uh, Angisa would have made uh, was rather harsh. He would have made a difference in that game. I'm pretty sure because Ndombele lost the ball, and Angisa is a better player than Ndombele. Uh, Kim being out did not really help. Uh, this also reminds me. I think that. Uh, is Tonali is missing for the first leg of the, of the semi-final some, 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 uh, something like that but uh, not 100% there, there was a game of the, I, th I, I, I think Tonali is out but you know uh, Kim missing the second leg uh, actually makes the defense a little a little bit shaky the mid, your midfield is a little, little bit more shaky then they're not given penalties so yeah again penalty penalties it was very much Napoli playing almost to the standard, but now Napoli is hitting a little bit of a rough patch. But I think it was Milan uh, who deserved overall to go through. But you know, I have uh, Rossonero tinted glasses. So that was the one game that maybe not fully delivered, but there was some drama there. And I think if Karatskaya scores the penalty, uh, that's very much the possibility that we see over time uh, because Milan were at that moment a little bit hanging on although looking safe-ish I felt with this additional push Na Napoli would have uh, pushed a little bit more Milan did not have the players on to score another goal yesterday though <sighs> Bayern had the chances I mean if Lira Sané runs through on goal uh, and converts makes it 1-0 for Bayern, maybe something's on. Uh, he also had a free kick and, and so on. So I think it was there. However, uh, Upo Meccano, if it was for offside, will, will be no offside sent off. Then Holland gets a penalty that he misses. And at that point, you need to score immediately after. It was not meant, meant to be. Uh, Holland scores right after the half. Sells the game. Yes, there's a penalty for Kimmich to uh, get back. I don't know what Thomas Tuchel, he seems to be already under pressure, not good school, good, good, good for him, he, he, he got uh, sent off with, with the second yellow card. Overall, uh, it was never a contest. But the only thing that annoyed me is that uh, City played in those god-awful uh, jerseys when they could have played in their home jerseys. So, that's the one game. And the other game, Inter against Benfica, 3-3 sounds thrilling. I will agree with you. However, the game wasn't thrilling. Barella with a brilliant goal in the 14th minute makes it 1-0. Then uh, Befica never could get into the attack all, all that much, except when Rafa Silva crosses in and Arsenal uh, heads it in. And then there were some nervy moments there where, you know, if a cross goes a little bit better in, if Befica can connect better, into kind of hanging back and just punting balls out. However, then a Di Marco cross to Lautaro. It's 2-1 Inter and just a, a few minutes later then Korea who had just come, come on. I mean, uh, what Inter brought, brought on, Korea, Lukaku, Chalanoglu. Um, Korea may mix 3-1, settles the title sets in the 70th minute. That Antonio Silva then heads one back and Musa gets one back in deep in store. So which did not matter all that much. And yes, bravo Inter. You, I did not expect you to do this. You also made it to the semi-final and now comes the real showdown. And so, um, we have the following semi-finals. We'll start with Real Madrid against Manchester City. Then we have the duel uh, Milan-Inter, Inter-Milan. Um, <laughs> only six days in between and there's a whole league round. This has me so worried. And then uh, City-Real Madrid uh, uh, is the other one. Final will be played at the Atatürk Olympic Stadium in Istanbul on the 10th of June. So there's a whole lot of preparation time. How does it uh, look uh, for favorites there? City, uh, almost 60% favorite over Real Madrid, which sounds about right, whereas the um, two Milan teams are more evenly matched with a slight advantage for Inter, which I also would agree. I think Inter have the better squad. That might make a difference. And for that reason, we have now the two Milan teams, uh, which is kind of in a sandwich between the two top favorites, and it's all down to... Manchester City being a favorite over Real Madrid. I honestly, while last year City against Real Madrid was an all-time Champions League classic, I'm not sure if we will see a repeat of that. And I think that because Milan derbies have been delivering, except for the last two uh, this year, but other than that, Milan derbies have usually, usually been de delivering and the spectacle will be great. And as, and as I heard, it's also good for the environment because no one has to travel. So... 
there you go. We should be happy for Inter against Milan. That was it from me. Let me know what you thought about the Champions League quarter quarter quarterfinals and who do you see moving on to the final? Uh, Who do you root for? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.